Dutch people like drinking coffee and gossiping a lot. Yep, that's my culture. And if you ever visit the Netherlands, maybe people will bring out some coffee and biscuits. But what if you're really a good friend? What if you're having really a good time? Then aren't biscuits a little bit plain and insulting? Well, if you ever visit the Netherlands, then there is a chance that they will bring out da 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 da, da these bad boys. Yes, this is a Dutch snack. And today I'm going to show you what are called bossebollen. Now, let me see how to open this atrocity. Oh, here it is. Open it with a knife. Because today there is another episode of Coffee with Bart. And in each episode I will show you a Dutch snack. Oh yeah! And today I am bringing out the bad boys. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a foreigner, you're probably wondering what the hell these things are. It's hard to describe. How do you explain to a foreigner what bossebolle are? They are basically something like giant cream puffs covered with chocolate frosting. These things are also filled with whipped cream. Oh, and it's impossible to eat them without making a massive mess. They are typically eaten during lunch, especially with coffee. Yep. Today, Bart Coppens brings you bossebollen. What's, what's funny is, as soon as you start eating them, the insides will spill out. If you are someone who is easily grossed out by people eating food and spilling, it's not a good idea to watch this episode because it's actually frowned upon to eat them with a spoon. You're supposed to eat them with your hands. And the whipped cream filling is usually going to spill everywhere. But that's part of the fun. I guess it's the uh, embarrassment slash the huge calorie bombs that they are that uh, makes them fun to eat. You see some of the underside. Now, I'm gonna be honest, these things are tasty. I like them, but they are huge calorie bombs. What does bossebolle mean? Well, the word bollen refers to something that is round, like a sphere or a globe. And Bosse refers to the city of Den Bosch in the Netherlands, which is where the snack was invented. These things have been around since about the 20th century, which is far longer than I have been around at least, in the province of Brabant, the Netherlands. And since then, they are a sort of popular thing to eat during lunch or bring out for your friends. Sometimes they're also eaten as dessert, but more commonly during lunch. Now, those of you who are new to my channel are probably wondering why this is happening. My channel is mainly about nature, my channel is about biology, the study of insects, and in particular butterflies and moths. But I have a very silly uh, web series in which I show people a classic Dutch snack in each episode. And for some reason it's popular. I'll explain more of that later. But first, it's time to dig in. Now, I'm going to give you one warning. Warning. If you cannot stomach seeing people eat food and make a mess, then don't watch this. I like to give a fair warning in advance. It's impossible to eat these things in a decent way, which is part of their appeal, I suppose. Uh, yeah, but if you're easily grossed out, careful with watching this one. So far I managed. This is what I'm talking about. These things make such a mess. Oof. Everywhere. Everything is going to be coated in whipped cream and chocolate. You may want to give someone a napkin if you give them one of these things. As you can see, the filling 
is whipped cream. I do not recommend eating these if you're on a diet. Wow. There you go, YouTube. Now you know what bossa bolle are. They taste pretty good, of course. But they're like one million calories. Man. If you are going for something modest, I don't recommend it. Yeah. And Generally, you are supposed to eat them with your hands. Of course, in a restaurant, you'll probably get a spoon or a fork to eat them with, but this is a traditional way. Yum. There you go. One down, and I already feel kind of full. I still have a second one, and I think I'm actually going to eat it in this video. Uh, I was actually on a diet. <laughs> I guess I'll just skip dinner tonight. So uh, yeah, let me guys uh, let me tell you something about myself right now. Personally, I am uh, doing pretty well. I'm excited because spring is coming soon, and I've waited for this for so long. My hands are so itching to start breeding moths again. And I think actually maybe in two weeks time I'm gonna bring all my hibernating cocoons out of the shed and uh, yeah, warm them up and that's just going to be an explosion of moths. And I hope to uh, make many Moth Cycles episodes. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's uh, one, an another one of my uh, web series. I like to divide my content into smaller mini series or web series so people know what to expect and they can watch the playlist. So it's easier to people to navigate and find the stuff that they love to watch, right? This is just really more casual stuff. But it's fun. I live in the Netherlands, a small country in Northern Europe. And I suppose not many people know much about it. So I was like, hey, why not show people snacks on YouTube from my country? Most of you have no clue what people in the Netherlands actually eat. And uh, it's kind of funny. Now let me tell you guys how uh, this trend kind of started. You see, I'm a demonetized YouTuber, which kind of sucks because that means it's harder for me to, uh, to sustain my channel. YouTube isn't supporting me. When I upload videos and they get a lot of views, I actually get nothing from it in return from YouTube. Most of you probably already know, but in case you're new here. So in return, I have to do things like crowdfund myself and I'm always thinking of creative ways to do that and to make it fun and engaging. Now, I have one crowdfunding website. Uh, it is called Ko-Fi. And in the spirit of the website, you can uh, send people a tip or a donation. Uh, I believe it's, it starts with like a $3 amount, which is the price of a cup of coffee. So this website is called Ko-Fi. The philosophy of the website is like you can buy somebody a coffee, like, hey, I'll buy you a coffee. Of course, it's, it's symbolic because you're giving them actually money. You're giving like, them like tips of three dollars or more. So I was like, um, you know what, if, if we raise a certain amount, I want to do something in return. I want to reward the people who help, uh, help me run the channel. So I was like, okay, if we hit a certain amount in tips, the tips goal, and I'm going to show you one uh, classic Dutch snack on my channel. And that was the first episode. Well, w when that happened, I expected that that was the last of it. It wouldn't get much attention. It's just that I wanted to do something in return for the people who helped me. Of course, in the form of entertainment, that's what I do. I'm a YouTuber and in some way that makes me an entertainer, I guess. So I was like, hey, for them, I'll make an episode. I, I really didn't expect it to go anywhere. But uh, after uploading that first episode, the response was overwhelming. 
I even got emails and suggestions from people in the Netherlands uh, telling me what to show. Oh Bart, you should show uh, stroopwafels or uh, bokkenpootjes. Do you know what it is? If you're Dutch, you know what this is. So yeah, we have a lot of uh, snacks in my country. And it was in the spirit of the website Go Find With You buy somebody a coffee. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna drink some coffee and show some unusual food from my country. Turns out it was more popular than I imagined. Each time after I uploaded one episode, soon after we would hit the tips goal for the next episode and the next episode, and this is already episode number four. That's uh, good news for me and good news for you. Cause that means the crowdfunding is going kinda well. And me having a better budget to work with means better videos for you. So. I'm now going to read some of the messages so you guys uh, send me through the website Ko-Fi. So usually in this, uh, in this series I thank the people who uh, tipped me and helped me reach the tips goal. Ah, well, <clears throat> let me check. So soon after uploading episode number three I received a tip from a person named Steven. And Steven tipped me six dollars. Thank you very much, Steven. That's very generous of you. And he included a message. Oh wait, let's wait for the clock. Tick tock. Shut up. Oh man, I hate the sound of that church. I know some people will like it. But it's disrupting my concentration. I'm not that good at concentration. Oh my god, it's ten o'clock. It's going to do it ten times. Please hurry up, please hurry up. Hey, I have an audience to entertain. Thank you. Damn. Time is a bitch. Did I just really say that? Yes, I did. Shh. <sighs> My God. Back to the message. Steven tipped me six dollars and he said, Make another Coffee Time episode already, you scrub. Well, he didn't say the word episode. That was my mind making it up. Anyway, thank you, Stephen. That's very generous of you. I know this person and he is also a patron of mine. So on top of that being a patron, he is also helping the other crowdfunding website. Thank you, Stephen. That's very generous of you. Let's see what else other people have to say. Ladies and gentlemen, not shortly after, I received another tip through Ko-Fi and it was by a person named Danik. Do I pronounce it right, Danik? And Danik said, I'm looking forward to the next part in your entomology course. Keep up the great work. Ah, so you watched the entomology course. Thank you very much. I'm happy to learn that people like it. It is very different content from what I usually do with the butterflies and moths. But I really want to become uh, this year more educational. So I also want to do more biology lessons and stuff like that. So I'm happy to hear feedback about, uh, about those. So uh, it's, it's, I think it's very important to educate people about nature, insects, etc. So uh, and I think I'm up for the job. I already have an audience. I have a pretty good brain. So I want to develop more like online courses, uh, more, more explanations, stuff about science. And the entomology course. So uh, thank you, Danique. Your um, six dollar tip will most certainly help me because these episodes take a lot of work. It's a lot of writing. You have to write the script. And I think what I uploaded was the first part about evolution of insects. It's already three hours of, um, of text alone. It uh, took like two weeks to write it. I was, uh, I think it was like five to six hours per day, I was writing it down and making the presentation, exporting it to Movavi, writing a script. So, uh, last but not least, let's talk about the next tip. Somebody named Sir Real said, thank you. And they tipped me $50. Wow. Thank you, Surreal, whoever you are. Hey, your name must be a pun. Surreal, Surreal, Surreal. Ah, starting to get it. Whoever you are, Surreal, if you are even a Sir. 
Thanks for the $50 tip. That's a pretty generous donation to give to a stranger that you were watching on YouTube. I will make sure to use it in a way that benefits the channel. And I've actually already done so. Let me tell you guys what I was up to yesterday. Uh, spring, like I said, is coming back and I've actually started to film the first outdoors videos again. And one of the things that I uh, filmed was a very rare species of freshwater fish in the Netherlands, which is actually a species of lamprey. Believe it or not, in my country there is one species of lamprey. I believe the scientific name is Lamptera planeri, something like that. I could be wrong. And the English name is, I think, the Brook lamprey. And these can be found in small forest streams in the forest. Uh, very early in spring when the water is still cold. They have this migration, almost like salmon. They migrate usually into the small streams, into the forest, where they reproduce and die. And I was making an episode about this. So, uh, and because of, of course, these episodes involve a lot of traveling across the country, because uh, if you want to see good species of animals and nature, you have to uh, find them in their natural environment for a little bit. And for that, I do have to spend money in uh, stuff like bus tickets. So it's, it's not much, but it adds up if you travel all the time. So uh, I'm most likely just going to save up all these funds and spend them in train ticket, bus ticket. So um, these $50 are, are enough for me to make like two or three episodes of me and nature. First one being the lamprey I just showed you, but I also have some plans to show you some uh, unusual seasonal species in my country, like a special species of butterflies and moths and fish and stuff like that. It's going to be exciting. So yes, I do want to rebrand re a little. I will forever be the sexy moth king. My, the main thing I do on this channel will forever be the butterflies and moths. They brought me success. They are my biggest passion. But I'm also really trying to introduce some new stuff here. Last but least, we have one boss ball left. Are you ready to make another terrible mess with me? Oh god, this is going to be so... It feels so wrong, but so right. Tastes very chocolatey for sure. Oh my god. I know people are going to make awkward memes of this right now. Damn. I feel like a total savage doing this. Just look at that. Who invents this kind of stuff, huh? Dutch people is the answer. This is my freaking breakfast as well. I actually just woke up a few hours ago. And I'm gonna need some napkins after this, man. Damn. I really don't know what to say, my mouth is full. And I don't like to talk when my mouth is occupied. Yeah. I'm gonna wash my hands, guys. Now you've learned what bossa bolla are. And now you've seen my terrible eating etiquette. If there is ever going to be the next episode, I will see you again, of course. Meanwhile, I'm just going to start working on the best butterfly and moth videos that I'm going to be releasing in spring. Please be patient. My, some of my videos take a long time to make. I put a lot of passion in the long videos like moth cycles. Some of them take over a year to produce. Last but least, Thank you guys for having my back 
and supporting my channel this much, it really means a lot to me. It means I can really use my artistic uh, passion to make some very long and detailed videos about nature and insects. Which is what I really love doing. See you guys next time. Maybe there's gonna be an episode 5. Do you have any suggestions of Dutch snacks you wanna see? Oh, I was thinking, I've only shown you sweet snacks before, but we can also uh, so show savory things like croquetten or frikandellen. What do you think about that, huh? Would that be interesting? Bye bye.